good morning students welcome back to my channel today i am going to explain about the free electron theory so in this free electron theory concept i am going to explain about the classical free electron theory so before you are going to watch the my channel please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching so students generally free electron theory can be exist in three stages first one classical free electron theory second one quantum free electron theory and third one band theory of solids so here the classical free electron theory was developed by dudi and lorentz in 1900 based on the following assumptions so here generally according to this theory metal consists of free electrons and positive ion cores the free electrons bound to move within the metal in completely uniform potential field among these ion cores the moment of free electrons obey the laws of kinetic theory of the gases also here these free electrons move in random directions and collide with either positive ions it is fixed into the lattice or free electrons here all the collisions are elastic collisions because there is no loss of energy so let us consider a metallic conductor here when there is no any application of the electric field all the free electrons move in random direction here the net current flow is zero if you apply electric field on your metallic conductor it exerts a force on the free electron so that force is lorentz force so which start accelerating towards the positive terminal as the free electron move they collide again and again with positive ions of the metal so each collision destroys the extra velocity gained by the electrons so here due to random motion of the electron in the metal velocity of the electrons continuously change but they are move with average velocity of rms so it obey the classical kinetic theory of the gases so here the rms velocity is equal to square root of root 3 kbt by m so here the main our aim is to determine the electrical conductivity by using classical free electron theory so here under the influence of the electric field the electrons in a metal accelerated opposite direction of the applied electric field and it acquire constant velocity this velocity is known as drift velocity drift velocity can be also defined as the the average velocity acquired by a electron is known as drift velocity here first of all you can take the equation force is equal to e so here it is force is lorentz force small e is a charge of electron capital e is a applied electric field assumed as it is equation 1 but already you know that newton's second law of motion according to newton's second law of motion f is equal to ma mass into acceleration so it is equation 1 and it is equation 2 both the equations can be described as force then we can equate both the equations we get ee is equal to ma then it can be written as in terms of a is equal to ee by m but acceleration a is equal to formula velocity by time that means the rate of change of velocity is known as acceleration we know that so velocity by time can be written velocity by time can be written as vd by tau so acceleration a is equal to vd by tau where v vd is known as drift velocity and tau is known as relaxation time so here already we know that previously acceleration a is acceleration a is equal to ee by m and here acceleration a is equal to vd by tau we can equate both equations we get vd by tau is equal to ee by m so but vd can be written as ee by m into tau it is a drift velocity expression so it can be noted as next equation number so substitute equation 6 in 1 so here so generally the equation of the current density j is equal to nevd n means number of electrons free electron density e is a charge of electron vd is equal to drift velocity so it is the formula of current density now we have a vd value so vd is equal to ee by m into tau we can substitute vd value in this expression we get j is equal to nevd so here we get j is equal to nevd that is an expression 
So Ne VD means Ne VD is equal to E by M into tau. We can substitute that one. We get Ne square tau by M into capital E. Capital E can be written as separately because for the microscopic form of Ohm's law, we know that the relation between current density and conductivity is J is equal to sigma E. So we can compare these two equations in the place of J, same is observed and E also same thing. Then in the place of sigma, we can write N e squared tau by M. So here we get sigma is equal to N e squared tau by M. This is an expression for electrical conductivity by using classical free electron theory. So it is an expression for electrical conductivity. By using this we can write an expression for resistivity because conductivity and resistivity both are reciprocal to each other. Then we can write rho is equal to m by n square tau. So where tau is a relaxation time. The relaxation time can be defined as the time taken by the force electrons to reach their original position from the disturbed position in the presence of electric field. Relaxation time can be defined as the time taken by the force electrons to reach their original position where it is from the disturbed position original position from the disturbed position is known as relaxation time in the presence of electric field. So what is mean free path? The mean distance travelled by electron between any two successive collisions as known as mean free path that also can be defined as the distance travelled by the wave between two successive collisions also known as mean free path that can be denoted as lambda relaxation time can be denoted as tau so here the mean collision time can be defined as the mean time taken by an electron to make any two successive collisions the mean time taken by an electron make any two successive collisions is known as mean free collision time so it is about the mean free collision time now let us see what is the success that means what is the advantages of classical free electron theory so classical free electrons theory verify the ohm's law and also it successfully explain the electrical and thermal conductivities of the metal and also it is used to derive the weidmann franz law so it is also explain the electrical resistivity electrical resistivity of a metal so and also explain the optical properties of the metal so these all are success or the merit uh, so, sorry or merits of the classical free electron theory next let us see the what are the d merits of the classical free electron theory so here these are the drawbacks of the classical free electron theory. So classical free electron theory fails to explain the photoelectric effect, Compton effect and black body radiation etc. And also it fails to explain the electrical conductivity in a semiconductors and insulators. And also it fails to explain the specific heat magnetic susceptibility and depends upon the conductivity temperature. Okay, so and also it fails to explain the electromagnetic behavior. So these are the drawbacks of the classical free electron theory. So students, this is about the completely classical free electron theory. So if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.